Hi everybody, welcome back to the channel and welcome to Adrenafx tips and tricks for your studio. Now, as you can see, we are in a different studio today. This one is Studio 2. You usually see me in the big studio, which I class as Studio 1. That's the one with all the bright white walls, really echo echoey. And I've cleaned out Studio 2. This is mainly my portrait studio. So as you can see, we've got artwork that's been done. And that's how my work is from a reference on a screen. So I'm just going to give you a little talk through on building a studio for yourself, how I built this one, sort of price listings along the way on what it costs to do this if you are thinking of building a studio outside. So basically this studio is an eight by six garden shed. It may look all fancy, but it's just a simple garden shed. I got given this shed by a really good friend who brought this shed for his garden. It was new enough, virtually brand new. He put insulation in it. So I had full insulation. It actually came with an extractor as well because he had an extractor unit in there as well. It was used for his outside coffee and smoking shed. So he changed his garden around and gave me this shed, which was an absolute bonus. So it made the start of the build really, really cheap for me, guys. So a big thank you to Adam if you're watching. So we started off with a garden shed and the door on this is to this side just here because most sheds when you've got your pitch roof like that you've got a door either there or to the back that side but the door on this one comes to the side it came with a window as well which would have been where the Michael Caine bonnet is just here so I panelled all the window off for starters cladded all that off outside and sealed the window took all the glass out and then I moved into the inside and I panelled all the inside in OSB. This is all insulate, insulated, as I said. So all the floors insulated, the roof. I redone the roof because when you look at eight by six sheds in people's gardens, after a time, the roofs start to sag down. I'll put a picture up now so you can see what similar sort of things they look like. So I started off by putting extra struts across the roof there's an extra four struts in this eight by six and usually you only get one in the middle and then as i say i put 18 mil osb board over the top to really strengthen the roof up because i wanted this to last this has now been up for like four getting on probably five years and it is absolutely perfect guys so i built it all up and i made this i didn't put this straight to the floor i made a timber four by two frame on the floor and then put four by four legs concreted into the ground so it's raised eight inches off the floor so you've got a breather gap underneath the shed it's got the shed floor then it's got insulation and then it's overlaid in 18 mil osb so it's a nice solid floor paint it every year so it's painted in saddling every year so it's all nicely treated up we've got guttering running down both sides and i advise you to do that if you're doing an out, outside shed i'll stick a picture up now as you can see where the arrows are pointing if you don't put guttering on you get splashbacks from the rain splashes back up onto the sides of your outbuilding and it rots the bottom panels so i advise putting guttering down both sides and i've got a water butt to the back end of this shed i've got a load of trees that cover all around here you can probably hear pigeons there in the trees that's the only thing you do here around here is a little bit of rain on the roof and you hear pigeons loads of them in the trees there you go so it's got all trees around it so in the summer you've got the nice canopies over the trees and it keeps the sun off this and it just stays in really nice temperature so moving on to what we've got in here if you're doing your your own studio build yourself a little workstation. I've built mine to one side. I've got a mirror sort of image of this without the easel to the back of the camera. And that's got a cup mat, reference pictures, things like that. I've got a little beer fridge in the corner for cold drinks. And I've just got a piece of worktop along here, which goes across the span of the six feet. So I'm basically put two pieces either side of me that come out extra pieces. And so it's all 
working round you. So when you're facing the easel, you've got all these bits to hand. It's nice to have it all nice and organized, especially when you're airbrushing everything to hand, as you know me, in the big studio on the other tips and tricks. I've just done the carousel build and that's everything to hand again. Just makes your working environment a lot better and more efficient guys if you've got everything to hand as you're working especially when you're painting so this side we've got all the paints that i'll be using when i'm doing my portrait work i've got loads of skin tone sets mixed up we've got mixing cups so from here across is my paint side you've got your monitor above and that's just the samson it is identical to the one that's in the big studio usb in the back you can put your image across into the tv zoom it up and you can move this on the bracket to face you as you are working on your artwork so they're nice and simple guys going back to the paints i'll use this little side shelf for mixing and when i do color portraits i have all pre-mixed skin tone sets now this is a good tip if you're getting into colour portraits and you're starting to mix your own skin tones, the paper that I use, I would recommend getting a sheet of that paper, chopping it up into strips, making your skin tone sets and spraying them out on the card. So we've got a 50% spray out and then I move down and I do a full opaque 100% spray out on the bottom. And I've done this for all my skin tone sets. I've got skin tone set one skin tone set two and three and there's like 18 probably more in each set so i can basically go up hold it to the screen little window and i can find the color really close quite quick and i know exactly how that paint's going to sit on that paper because it is sprayed out on the same spray out card so that's a good little tip guys if you're mixing colors and want to get some skin tone sets done I've done that with my grayscale in here as well. I've got a grayscale set mixed up and they match across to my grayscale value finder so I can just jump straight in, hold it up to the picture and I'm away painting. So it's just a little bit more efficient. The actual easel part, I'll pop it up on the screen now. This is a cheap easel that you would pick up from either Hobbycraft or The Works. Quite a small easel. And when I got the easel, I would basically just put a board on it sort of there and put my piece of paper on but I wanted to make it a bit wider and a bit more workspace so I've rebuilt the easel set the the actual angle of it as you can see here and then just added some extra timbers I've put some legs that come out and just strengthen this easel up a 15 mil sheet of MDF laminated in black vinyl with a little window ledge type lip on the end and you can put your scalpels all your little small pieces that you need you can rest on there and then below that you've got another shelf here which has got paint pens all your texture things for doing hair skin textures they all sit in the bottom there to this side of the easel you've got another arm that comes out here that holds the airbrushes on two holders I've always got two airbrushes in this studio, one for detail and one for a little bit more coverage. So they sit there. This side we've got masking tapes. We've got a couple of fine lines for doing intricate pieces on artwork. I've got some big tape around the back for doing some big coverage pieces on the artwork. Moving to this corner, this is the cleaning side, sort of a little cleaning station. You've got a bin directly underneath. You've got pots, cotton buds, we've got thinners, we've got water, we've got all the cleaning tools to strip the airbrushes down if I need to, if I get in trouble and it starts clogging up, I can strip the brush straight down to my left. But we've got a piece of artwork that was done in one of the videos that I've done in the big studio, so I'll drop that in here. It's always good to put pieces of your artwork up in your studio because it, it gets you inspired if you put your latest pieces up and different pieces of artwork it just makes it more of an arty type environment and it just gives you that boost and enthusiasm to paint if you've just got blank walls and you're just staring at a blank easel as you're painting it's just nice to get a bit of color put your own artwork up all of the pieces of artwork that you like stick them up. i've got a big alien versus predator one 
on this side of the wall, big canvas on the ceiling, that's up there. Elvis Presley's staring at me right now, he's on the back wall, things like that. So it just, it make it your own studio, guys. It's where you're gonna spend a lot of time doing your artwork. So we're moving on to airlines. As you can see, we've got a air filter here, air filter regulator, and then I've got a, like a Y connection coming off with two airbrush airlines. So I can permanently hook up two brushes so I'll just pick between the two and you can adjust your air here. This main line goes down, goes out this studio and then it runs up to the big studio and branches off the big compressor. And I can turn the big compressor on and off in this studio if I need to. So if I run out of air, which I don't, I fill a tank of air up and I can sit in here all day airbrushing and I'm not gonna worry. And you've got your soundproofing on the door and that just quietens it down in here just a little bit you can still hear like i say pigeons and things because we've got all the trees around the back big canopy of trees that go all the way around so that just that's the only thing you hear crows pigeons the old cat that will run across the roof but can make you jump when you're painting not very good when you're on a right detail bit like an eyeball and the cat jumps on the roof not good at all but that's what you've got to expect if you're outdoors in something like this but they are great little studios i really like painting in here the sound quality sounds better i think in here especially on camera it's really hard to do editing you know in the big studio because it's really echoey in there because it's just bouncing off all the walls and it's really really bright so i hope you've enjoyed this video on tips and tricks for your studio You'll see me a lot more in this studio. My reviews from now on, any new airbrush stuff that I get, I will do reviews from this studio. We will be doing step-by-step -step guides and portrait tutorials for you in this studio as well. And then any big stuff like the e-bike build that we're doing. Any sort of bigger stuff where I'm using solvent paint or bigger guns will be in Studio One. So thanks for watching. Don't forget, if you're new to my channel, like share subscribe it's really helping the channel out guys big welcome to all the new subscribers that have come across and thank you so much for all the comments it's really nice to get a bit of feedback with you guys on the channel if there's any videos that you want to see just drop some comments guys if there are things that you're stuck on and you want a bit of info or you like a video doing on some bits that you're stuck on or something that you want to see next i will gladly sort that out for you so thanks again for watching see you in the next one